And we're rolling. Howdy folks. Welcome to Make It Great. Wow. Today, the old man, the pops. <laughs> He's a father, a grandfather now, a Hall of Fame caliber football coach, a genuine nice guy. And we're happy to have you with me. So many people have asked me, are you going to have your dad on? Are you going to have your dad on? I was like, that's going to be kind of weird. But sure. Well, I was a little reluctant at first, but... Uh, well, you saw the cursing. I, 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 the, cursing. The, one, the cursing in the last episode. So we're gonna, this is going to be a PG-rated family event. Sure. Well, I, I don't know why anybody would want to listen to me. I consider... Actually, my whole family, we, we've been kind of a vanilla, you know, I, I consider boring kind of family. But, man, when you were born, it, uh, it changed the world. It was like we were a black and white TV show, and now color, here comes color. The, the HD. Sprinkle. Colorful, I love you know, it. I like to spice up your life whenever I can. Uh, you do. Just put a little extra pepper. Excited to be here. No, we're happy to have you. And uh, something happened right before this show, and I think we'll... I mean, if you don't know, I'm not going to introduce them. You're just going to get to know you over this thing. I'm not going to go sure. through your whole thing. And most people probably watching are going to watch just for you, and I'm just like the little... No. Because, no, you're no. awesome, and we appreciate you having me. But... Right before this podcast, I was like, oh, I need to shave my head, shave my face, get looking good, and split decisions that you make in your life. I had, you know, a decent mustache going on, and there was one second of thought that I was just like, and you know what? I was like, dang it. I wish I wouldn't have cut it off. But split second decisions, Japan. Going to Japan. Oh. Not, not like, not a split second decision, obviously, but... Just one of those decisions that will affect you for... Sure. You, you talk about synchronicity on your previous podcast. And I really enjoyed listening to, to Anna and to Dustin. And Dane, I apologize. I, I haven't listened to yours yet, but I'm going to. Um, but you talk about synchronicity a lot and timing. Uh, to answer about Japan, I, I was on an elevator at a football coaches convention in 1993, January of 93. And, and a guy offers me a chance to coach football in Japan. And uh, we had you at the time. You were three years old. And I called home to Susan, your mother, my wife, and said, hey, what do you think? We got a chance to go to Japan. And she said, uh, when I married you, I promised I would f follow you anywhere you wanted to coach football. But I meant in the continental United States. But anyway, we made the decision together. After we, They flew us over there to look at it, make sure it was legit. But, yeah, we made a split second Split it's second. Like, that split second, but just one of those decisions that now I got no mustache and I feel <laughs> kind of silly. And you picked up your whole family and went to Japan. Right. And it was a leap of faith. And sometimes in this life, you know, you, you have to take those leaps of faith if you want to experience the world and grow. Yeah. So I mean, it was. I, it seems like a totally different lifetime. Like that wasn't real. You know. I like have. It's a, like one of those things where you're like. Sure. And, I lived and in Japan for four years. You did. And, and I wanted to ask you, one of the questions I wanted to ask you is, do you have a, do you remember the very first night that we arrived in Japan? By Yes, I know you were only, you were only three, almost to the day, three years old. So I don't know if you have memories of this. I, I wonder about that. I think I talked with somebody about like first memories yeah. or something like that. And it's like, I remember it happening but i don't know if it's because you guys told me about it so many right. times or i've seen pictures right. but i know it, and i can almost like create a video in my head of it because maybe based on those based on real life experiences a little mixture of all of that but i remember playing playing like little ultraman sure. games with real quick without belaboring this whole thing but the very first night we get welcomed by the general manager of the football team that i was going to be coaching and he had a three-year-old son named Ko, goes by Kochan in Japan. Well, he gave you one of those little one of those little wrist things, Ultraman wrist things that made laser sounding. And you guys started playing, and you became fluent in Japanese probably after four or five months. And it was fascinating to see where Susan and I, uh, we definitely just barely learned how to say, you know, where's the bathroom in Japanese. Yeah, yeah you know? exactly. So anyway. Foreigner. Great, great, great memories, great experience. Such a, yeah, I, I mean, I owe, and it's just such a crazy thing, like just our family and everything we've done, everything we've been through, and just that constant, you know, wanting to change, support, grow constantly. I feel like it's been an underlying thing that's been pretty cool. I mean, you're sitting here on this crazy idea that I've had 
of like, hey, I want to start a podcast. Sure. But it's just, it's been a, I mean, there's so many different ways that we could take this. And I've got a, you, I got 32 you, things I, listened. I figured, I figured you would be more prepared than me. I just wrote down a couple things that it, it's been real interest. Like everybody um, kind of holds you in the soup. I mean, whether you want to believe it or not, no. you're a very humble no. man. But everybody I talk to, you're just a genuine. I was talking to people at the gun store today. And they were asking about you and how you were doing. And I was like, oh, have you been in? Has he been in a while? And they're like, no. And I was like, that's probably a good thing. My mom will probably be happy with right. that. So, and they were, I was like, yeah, he's just a genuine nice guy. And everybody, I think Anna, if you listen to her podcast. I did. I, people ask me, is are you like a secret serial killer that <laughs> nobody knows of? There's got to well, be something. I'll tell we, you what. We, we've all got, we've all got things. But no, <laughs> Anna had some nice very nice comments. So, Anna, as you watch this, I know you're in teamwork with guitar, with with Bart on uh, this whole uh, nice. Great Day Tattoo and this podcast. Whatever Make it, it great. But, uh, no, that's kind, but let's move on to something else. <laughs> Deal. We can do that. Um, I... I mean, we can talk about Dumb and Dumber for an hour and a half you know, if you want to. You know, that's a lovely accent you have there. <laughs> New Jersey? <laughs> Austria. Wait, uh, that, and this, I've told this story a bunch, and this is, so back in the 90s, where printers became a thing, well, first computers became a thing, oh, right. and oh, right. printers became a thing, <laughs> and we, you know, our family, luckily we got a printer, and I think it was maybe like 2 a.m., midnight, something like that. Oh, okay. I think the whole family just hears, Forty forty five minutes of j- 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 as mom is watching ER the show. I remember this. So this is about nine. <laughs> George PM, Clooney. George, all that show, and I did want to watch it. And I'm in there learning about this computer thing. And hey, I can print. Oh my gosh, here is the manuscript for the movie Dumb and Dumber. I'm gonna print that and, thing off, hoping it'd be done in about three minutes. It took yeah. forty five well, minutes. And the pages had those little tear off <laughs> things that you know the reams. And so I took those reams and those paper over to the print shop at Hanover College where I was coaching at the time and had a nice little binder put on it and I had that thing you, in my file for do you still so have that? I gave it to a colleague of mine who loved it, who was younger than me and I just wanted to give him a gift and uh I sure hope that he still has that because it's worth a lot. Such a yeah, I mean, such a movie that is yeah, shaped, it's shaped both of our it, lives. It really did. But it, and looking back and knowing you now and watching that movie as an adult, I watched that movie maybe a hundred times with you, and I am just surprised that you would let your children watch that. Terrible parenting back in the it, day. It Terrible. Out, yeah, you really messed us up. Uh, for sure. I learned a lesson that these kids are sponges. If you're a parent <laughs> out there, they they hear everything. So here's a quick story. Uh, about Dumb and Dumber and about our your your sister and my daughter Emily. Um, so she's <laughs> sorry to tell this about you, Emily, but she's probably kindergarten and she's getting ready to get on the bus uh, to go to school. And I don't know where Susan's at at the time, her mother, but I'm in charge of getting her on the bus that day. And I'm zipping up her coat. And poor Emily at the time, now she's got great smelling breath. But back then, her breath was was not good that day. And I, I just happened to have a mint on me, and I said, Tic Tac, sir, to her. And she <laughs> says, at kindergarten, at five years old, she says, get the hell out of here. And that's when I knew I was, oh, no, that's we've gone too I far. Know, I love it. And there, yeah, that is, that, Be careful, parents. That is her personality to a T. So I, I, maybe it just like unlocked that for her. That's all I can say that. That's, uh, yeah, I don't know. Okay. Gosh, don't know. So many good things from that movie, and it's... Uh, you know, it's good to laugh. I think that's one of the things in life that when you can have experiences with other people and share, and, and if something makes you laugh, like a movie or a, uh, anything, it, it's good. Susan and I, we watch nearly every night. We, we, we laugh watching Everybody Loves Raymond. That's kind I, of our show to go to. You whatever know? makes you laugh, that's what, like, if everybody's got different things yeah. that make them laugh, and yeah. if that's your thing, go for it. I know it's not everybody's thing, but we absolutely love it. I love that you love it, but I can't. I won't sit through it. Hmm. What, other, what other stuff do you have? Oh, I just have a variety you of things that. So this many is, notes. This is the Rolodex. I heard you talk about, you know, in your shop, sometimes you have that Rolodex. If it's quiet, you just oh. pull something out to get people talking. Yeah, oh, so if, if we struggle to come up with something to talk about, I, I had a, 
a, a list of things here, you know. So I, huh. I, I'm on your show, You're, though. So you, well, you, you've always been a very organized thing. I think I have binders and binders of just I have the champions manual, which maybe you know one of these days we'll put it out into a book or something. Yeah, but it's a good idea. It's been a, it's been a good thing to constantly look through a couple years and um, you know just little reminders. Well, there's so much. This champion's manual, I, I stole the idea from a college football coach who made something for his football team that was not playbook stuff. It was not X's and O's or fundamentals of the game. It was more positive type things to help build the culture of that team. And the more you can get people on the same page by having a book or a manual that we're all going to be on the same page as we read through this thing, it kind of helps steer the course for your your organization or your team so yeah and I mean teamwork's really important I've learned you know being around a, a team and you coaching a team throughout my whole life I've realized you know how important I enjoy being a part of a team and like getting to a bigger place with multiple people right this is a perfect segue uh, because as the day I would imagine that you put this podcast out for publication to the masses it's gonna be your birthday Okay, whether you uh, whether you know that or not, and so I had to bring a, giving me gifts on a birthday show? gift on the show, and, and, and I was going to wrap it, but I That's ran out of time, and I found this this bag that Mom always keeps a bunch of bags. So here is your present. If you would like to open that in front of, it's a quick, easy open. Not going to take a whole lot of time. Is this so from, is this the, from the, 1997? The, it, I, I found a box to put this stuff in, and uh-huh. sorry, but it's it's a. It's a CD player that I recently bought, and you bought uh, a CD I did. I, I had to have that in our living room to play some old cool CDs that I have. But we're talking about teamwork here, and uh, okay. I've got I've got uh, a couple this of those. This is This is going to cost it, some it, money. This man. this is a little advertising here for an organization so, that that I'm running. And this was going to be something that I'm going to bring up too. So we got. Can you see that teamwork guitar? Teamwork guitar. So you. Decided. Is, is, are these just all teamwork guitars? There's two teamwork guitar shirts in there, and then a unified flag football we'll shirt. We'll talk about that okay. next. Let's Sounds go with good. teamwork guitar. So you started playing guitar how many years ago? Okay, like, I, I, I'm a, I can remember dates pretty well. It was March 3rd, 2016. I'm reading a devotional uh, in the morning. Uh, that one of the players that I used to coach, mothers gave to me as a as a present as her son was getting ready to graduate. And this devotional was written by Tony Dungy. And on March 3rd, the devotional was about an 86-year-old man that wanted to learn how to play the trombone or the trumpet, one of the two, I can't remember. And it would start with a T and, and had an R right behind it. Or, or no, yeah, let's, let's say it was a trumpet. Trying. Okay, <laughs> wanted to learn how to play that. Uh, well, he was 86, and the people were amazed at his passion. Uh, he had played the bugle when he was 25, when he was in the Marine Corps, but now he's 86, and he had this passion for learning something new, and and he did. And people asked him, why did you wait till you were 86? And he says, because I didn't want to wait till I was 87. You know, I might not be here. And that morning, as I'm reading that devotional, I'd always had in the back of my mind, man, I, I wish I could play the guitar, and I just never had the time or... But now I kind of made time for it. So I went and bought a guitar, and I remember vividly Frank at Frank's Guitar in Franklin. He said, uh, what's your goal with playing the guitar? And I'd never really thought about that. And, he, and in about 10 seconds, I thought, of, well, if I ever have a grandson or a granddaughter or any grandchild, I would like to be able to play Happy Birthday for them. And so, by goodness, we are one month away from your nephew, my grandson's first birthday Mm -hmm. and I hope to be able to play happy birthday for him so so yes so therefore I started this organization called teamwork guitar because after I learned how to play I thought I can I want to teach beginners how to play because the joy that comes from music and being able to even put some chords and some sounds together it's very therapeutic and also the older you get I happen to happen to put your grandma and grandpa in a nursing home and I saw a lot of people sitting around in the nursing home just, you know, bored as can be. I, I, I don't want to be that guy. And I, I hope you never have to put me in there, but 
there's a chance you're going to have to put play me in card, there one cards, day. Cards, right? You know, we'll see. <laughs> and so I, I want to, I want to be able to play some guitar and have some fun with friends. I thought, no, I think that's good. And I mean, I remember when you first started, like, you know, it's an older person be like, I want to learn this new thing. And I don't play guitar. I know the same things that I was taught when I was in middle school, which right. was just a bunch of Blink One Eight Two songs and some random stuff. And yeah, hearing you play for the first couple times and just knowing that you're pretty bad at the beginning right and then you progressively get more and more tolerable and then eventually right. pretty good and right watch you play some stuff and you teaching other people makes sense because you have a very good way of like patiently and in a good way explaining to somebody how to do something where they're not pissed off or anything so i think beginners and teaching stuff is good for you well thank you this this is not a business it's a hobby that if anybody wanted to take lessons that had funding available, the money that they would give to me would go toward a nonprofit that me and my colleague Bud Bouton run called ePro Plus to help to help boys in Johnson County that do not have an active father figure in their life. So that's a little pub there, but uh, teamworkguitar.com is our website. Watch the watch the hitting of the table. Thank you. I gotta I gotta up this Sorry about that. You. No, yeah. you're good. I'm just telling you. Yeah. I mean, I don't care. We can shake this thing all day. New microphone really, really helps out a lot. I gotta send it back uh, tomorrow because I'm gonna get two. I can't get. That's all technical stuff, but I think I'm gonna go in a different. Direction okay. Well, there you go. They won't both sync up. So mm -hmm. we're making upgrades over here. But yeah, the team are guitar. You're so you've retired from coaching. Right Coach. before COVID, thank God, the good Lord was looking after me, kind of tapped me on the shoulder and said, it's time for you to get out of tackle football. And uh, But now, yes. and people ask me all the time what you're doing, and I'm like, well, is he just enjoying retired life? I was like, I don't, I think it'd be no. the same way if I quit doing what I enjoyed. It's like, what else can I do? So you've got teamwork right. guitar, you've got ePro Plus, which as you said is a foundation that looks after boys with, without a father figure in their life, which is super cool. And then you have... You're coaching Unified Flag Football, which is... Uh, in the fall at Franklin fall. High School. Franklin High School, Unified Flag Football. You guys made it to the regionals we last did. year? We did. We won the sectional. And it is... Unified Sports is really cool in Indiana. It, it mixes uh, mainstream learning kids with... I don't know whether you call them learning disabled or they just have some kind of... Uh, individualized learning plan, if you will. And, and it mixes those two groups together. And it's co-ed, and it's five on five, and it, I love it. It. It's, it. It's it was different to watch you coach. Obviously, the tailgating scene was a lot different, <laughs> but the coach, you know, the coaching was still there. The effort and the kids, and it was a really fun game. We, you know, we went to that. I think the last home game you guys had, and that was really cool to see. And uh, it is, yeah, it's something for everybody that everybody can kind of get involved in, especially right. at that young of an age. And just within the last week, I got asked by a good friend who is an assistant softball coach at Franklin High School. Their team is growing, and uh, they, they're going to run a JV program. And so you're now looking at the head JV softball coach for Franklin High School girls. And I absolutely have been to three practices so far and love it. Yeah, I think that's great. I, it's, it's cool to see you keep busy with other stuff. And I am always... Tap. Well, you, you, you had brought up the word retired, and and I, yes, I, I don't like that word. I, I I'm resigned from tackle football, but I'm refired. New chapters, if you will, on keeping busy, doing things that that help other people. You know, and I think that's if you can find something, if you can understand this visual. I, I learned this about two years ago. Uh, one of my best friends. Good friends, Jason Winkle, Dr. Winkle, uh, was given a speech, and he had three circles. And the first circle was something you're passionate about and, and, and something you really like doing. Mm -hmm. The next circle over was you've got to be good at it, okay? Uh, and then the third circle was it helps others. And when all three of those merge, that's when you know that you're doing what you're supposed to be doing. So you're, you're passionate you're really good at it as well and not only does it help you with that dopamine type fix that you got but it really helps other people in the process that's when you know you got it going on yeah yeah i think that's really important i mean you can be passionate about something but if you're not very good at it and if it's not helping anybody then what's the good point of it he brought up in the in the talk that he was giving about golf he says he absolutely is passionate about golf 
but he stinks at the game of golf, and therefore he's not going to make any profit or money out of it. So yeah, he had to find something else people. to do. Yeah. Yeah. No, I think it's – and, I mean, with you coaching tackle football, I mean, obviously, you know, you're good at it, and the passion was maybe, you know, you do it for so long, and you're just – I think it's that – I think it got evolved into the politics of it and stuff. And it's a lot to handle, a head football coach and stuff. Well, people always ask me why you stopped doing it. I was like, I mean, you just didn't want to do it anymore. What's a, what more do you need? That little voice sometimes starts talking to you, you know, like uh, there's something else to do in life. And I've enjoyed it. I was a part of tackle you, football for 50 years. And, and uh, I, I view life sometimes like going to Kings Island. You remember going to Kings Island? We took you there that day with your, your two middle school buddies. Of course. Uh, Will and Evan, and uh, you guys had a blast. But, you know, going to Kings Island, there's so many rides to do that, that to me, coaching tackle football was like being on the racer or the beast. And, and it was a blast. But I don't want to do it the whole day. There's so many other things out here in life that I want. Hey, there's the log flume over there. Hey, there's the bumper cars right here. Let's yeah. go have some fun with that. Well, we affected a lot of a lot of players and a lot of young men that, you know, I've talked to. I've got the chance of tattooing. And selfishly, I kind of lost that avenue of work because, you know, every year I'd get, you know, 100 new kids or so or 30 or whatever. I've screwed up your tattooed. business, huh? I'm real, I'm real hurt about it. No, it's been, it, it's been cool to tattoo your former players and become, you know, pretty good friends with a lot of them. Uh, I was just number one tailgater. That's all I had to offer. You were good. Play. You were good. I, Speaking I'm of, a little too good. You, know, you know, one of the things we teach is that a picture's worth a thousand words. And, uh, you know, you're, the tattoos that you do, mm -hmm. uh, th those are pictures that can tell a thousand word story that's on somebody, for sure. And uh, I, I brought a, a few pictures along with me just because I'd, I'd be negligent not to show a few pictures. Um, let's see, who I want to start with? Oh, geez. You know, show, show <laughs> I tell you what, I, we've got two children and just so proud of them. And I, I don't know if you've all seen pictures of Bart and Emily back in the day, but how about that? That was on my office wall at my home Ooh. office. Do you remember that one, Bart? That was yeah, good. remember that, that day? A, let, me, let me flip that around. Yeah. Okay, no puka shell necklace. We're good on that <laughs> one, too. Holy cow. I'd be negligent based on a Everybody Loves Raymond episode if I didn't show a picture of my, my bride. Okay, there's there's... Susan Leonard. What's up, Mom? Okay. I could also like photo and pose. She is on. a great. Well, and I, I like that. No, I like the real. I didn't raw. think of that. But like you know, you, you were talking about you know being one of the greatest tailgaters at Franklin College. Those are two of my favorite pictures of all time. When you showed up on the sidelines after after we just scored a touchdown in the second quarter of a homecoming game, your sophomore junior year, you had a three piece plaid suit on. I'm like, what are you doing out here? And then then you made that. That crazy head. That's probably okay. So I made a. Uh, I I had watched a, a documentary with my friends or heard about another artist artwork. Uh, I believe it's Wayne White. I could be wrong. Sorry, I don't have a fact checker right here. But I believe Wayne White made a big like Lyndon B. Johnson cardboard head. It looked like and he just strutted around town acting like Lyndon B. Johnson for some reason. And I was like, I can do that. So. Me, my buddy Adam, and his now wife Sarah built that all night, and I just like got to strut around acting like you the whole time. There's the there's the head. I'm sorry, I'm all over the place there, but that's pretty good representation. It was it man. was very accurate, yeah. and I had a lot of fun, and definitely wasn't both of those occasions inebriated in any way. Right. So there's there's my our grandson. Okay, we're in a great day tattoo onesie and unfortunately his father likes the Chicago Bears even though I'm a Green Bay Packer fan and an Indianapolis Colts fan but uh, uh, the great thing Cash here was born during the national anthem of the Super Bowl are you kidding me how how just, much better could it get it's those synchronicities man that just keep on paying you off bet. I guess no it's it's definitely cool to be uh, a little fun I was just FaceTiming with them a little bit earlier that's a cute kid. Yeah. You know? Well, yeah, absolutely. Thank you for that little show and tell picture. Pictures. That, I show. was like, <laughs> you're, yeah, I need to be more prepared. I need to, like, set up all this stuff and transpose uh, all these images in there. One day. But, the no, tailgating Franklin College game. I got my Franklin College tie-dye on today because I was like, that's what I'm going to wear. I love it. But, yeah, me and my friends almost had a lot of fun traveling 
well, a lot of almost too much fun <laughs> traveling. Is there is there so is there any such thing well, as too I, much fun? Uh, I think well, there's a country fun song that you, about fun that. Fun that you shouldn't have. Like mm. yeah, this is too much fun for somebody. Mm. But no, it was after after you uh, resigned from that. Saturdays became like, what do I do? Yeah. And then I found myself. I don't care about football as much as I did. <laughs> like I, I liked people. Are like what's your team? I'm like, well, like. Frank College, right? Like, you just went there. I was like, yeah, but I, like I, I'm invested. I actually have yeah. somebody that I care about them winning. Unlike, no offense, right. most sporting teams that are just from your. The spider? Nope, just fuzz. Uh, but that's yeah, it. it's all good. It was good. That's it's good. Now, I'm, now my Saturdays are free. I can do whatever I want. Right. I don't got to do anything for you. So it's good. Um, so. I wanted to talk about, a lot of people ask me where the Great Day Tattoo idea oh. came by, this whole great persona. And I remember I was in Colorado, I lost my job, uh, and I had to figure something out. I lucked in and just got lucky, but also I did a lot of hard work to get to that, I guess. But, you know, ended up with my own shop, and I was trying to think of what to call it. I was like, eh, I could call it this, which sounds kind of sick and metal, or I could call it this. And then I was walking a dog. And uh, something well, that you... Let, let me backtrack a little bit. I'll never forget, it was July 3rd of that year, and I've, I've lost the year because we're hosting a watching of the fireworks in Franklin mm -hmm. the night before the 4th of July. We're sitting out in front of our, our house uh, in lawn chairs with five other couples. And you call and say, Dad, I need a name for a tattoo shop. And so I proposed it to the whole group. And my good friend Ken Sears comes up with an idea. You're in Golden, Colorado, and your uncle has invented the, the Blue Mountains Correct. on Coors Light, my brother-in-law. Uh, Kenny Sears comes up with Mountain Blue Tattoo. I thought, oh my gosh, that's awesome, Kenny. I'm gonna tell Bart, hey Bart, Mountain Blue Tattoo. And you waited about two seconds and said, Nah. And I'm like, oh my gosh, that's the best name there is. Golden Colorado Mountain Blue Tattoo. And it's, then it was the next day. It's not the worst idea. It's the next day. I, on July 4th, I, I remember where I was out in the middle of the street doing something, you know, maybe blowing grass that we had just cut grass, blowing it off the street or whatever. Who knows? But you said, Dad, I got it. Great day tattoo. And I thought, it's good. Yeah, I was, uh, I was walking my dog and I was like, man. And the sun was shining on us. We were walking around, you know, seeing the mountains and everything. And I was like, man, it's a great day. Like, Shit, that's a good idea. Oh, hey, so, hey, oh, dang, hey, sorry. I've made it 27 <laughs> minutes. Anyways, but no, it's not in. It goes through. I tell people all the time, like my dad, every morning of like high school or middle school, <laughs> just bust in the door. Like, I'm sleepy. I don't want to go to school. It's like, it's a great day to be alive. And I'm like, this guy sucks. <laughs> Like, I don't want to go to high school, but in the end, valuable uh, lesson. And it helps, you know, even on a bad day at the shop, people are like, how's your day going? I could be having a terrible day. I'm like, well, I'm just trying to make it great. You know, it's not going the best, not just because uh, I don't have to have a great day, but if I can choose to make it one. You know, I think we all have influencers in our life. I wasn't. I wasn't that way all the time, okay? Yeah. I, I had... Uh, well, you kept it upbeat. And teachers, positive, coaches. You know, you give a lot of credit to your parents, my parents, um, also for how they people. raised us. Yeah, they, they were awesome. Uh, God rest their souls. And it's, it's... I had a coach who was ultra positive, who would constantly be getting everybody fired up with his positivity, and that rubbed off on me. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I'll never forget, my grandpa passed away when I was a freshman in college, and my grandma sent me one of his books that was on his bookshelf. And it was written by a guy by the name of Dr. Norman Vincent Peale. And the book was called The Power of Positive Thinking. And that semester in college, I read each chapter, highlighted it, and it was all about being positive in all types of situations. And uh, I wish I still had that book. I gave it to one of the players that I coached over at Wittenberg in Ohio when you were about six or seven years old. He got in a bad car wreck, screwed up his back, uh, probably couldn't 
play football or even walk again uh, very well the rest of his life because it was a bad accident. But I just felt the need to give him that book, you know. Yeah. So those kind of things, people, the things you listen to, the things that you watch, you try and make sure they're good. And uh, I'm going to belabor this point just a little bit. 1982, 1982, I'm a, spring of 82, I'm a sophomore in college and I'm in a computer science class. And I'm sitting, oh, second row, and there's only one computer in the entire class for 24 people. It's at the back in 1982. But the only thing I remember from that entire class was in the book that everybody had, and it was the concept of G-I-G-O. And a lot of people don't know what that means, but in the computer world, it stands for garbage in, garbage out. And whatever you, whatever garbage or data that you put into that computer, it'll be able to spit out any kind of uh, data, just like an Excel spreadsheet in whatever format you want. Well, at the same time, I was taking a sports psychology class and learning that the brain is so powerful in sports that the great athletes use this more than the average athletes. Mm -hmm. And they visualize and they do all kinds of things well. And it, if this is a computer, which it's even greater than the computer that was in the back of that room, if you throw garbage into this thing by the things you see and the things you hear, you're probably going to get garbage out in your life. If you throw good in, uh, you're more apt to get good out yep. or great out. Great in, great out. At the shop in Colorado, I painted a sign that says great in, great out. I love it. Yep, with a little eyeball and stuff. Way and to go. So, I, got, I got to go see that. No, yeah, it, you know, throughout life and stuff, it's definitely been a lot of garbage, garbage, garbage. And you sure. notice when, you know, you got that garbage coming in all the time, it makes you just feel like a dump. Yeah. And, and oftentimes, oftentimes people can be those things that, that are just negative and all kind of things. And at some point, you have to distance yourself from that negativity. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I think the thing I learned in coaching probably 10 years ago, that if you want to boil it down super simple, that it, we were talking about teamwork, by the way, that if, if, this, if, if this thing right here is a battery, like a car battery, mm -hmm. that, you know, with a positive and a negative thing, that all the time, every day, you're either charging this battery or you're draining the life out of the battery. And people do the same thing. And so uh, I want to be around chargers. I got, I got to keep it charged right here. I, I, I love that. That, that tells old, a story right there, that Dustin picture. Rich did for me. I we love try it. to keep it charged every day. You know, it's not, yeah. not always easy. No, to keep it's it charged, not. But if you take that time, take time to relax, refocus, um, that's all you can do is just keep charging. You want to charge other people. Absolutely. Start making those connectors and, yeah, distancing your, yourself from drainers, as you exactly. like to call them. Or you got to let the drainers know that they're draining and they need to they need to make some adjustments. Mm -hmm. And we all do ourselves as well. Yep. Sometimes I realize, oh, my gosh, I'm, I'm being a drainer uh, by the way I'm thinking or the things I'm saying. And, you know, we're all not perfect. We, we get that. And so uh, sometimes that being self-aware is huge. So self-awareness and uh, self-analyzing. A lot of the time and just taking that time to reassess and being like all right why am i drain like you know i'm getting down to the root of the problem of like why am i draining and what can i do better to charge it up and get others charged because it, it's that's what we try to do in the shop is have like you know consistent energy and when i'm down you know most times in the mornings i'll, I'll save my energy to when my client comes in the door and then i'm like all right game on let's have right. a good time uh and so sometimes in the morning before i'm just kind of not always positive. It's okay. You know, not always, but you got to put on a show sometimes. Um, and, and, and what you said right there is so true. Sometimes you have to fool your own brain by saying, you know, some, there's some mornings when I wake up and I'm not feeling good. My knee might be hurting or, you know, a little pain here and there. Old. And you have to say, yeah, it does come with age, but you have to say, you know, I feel good. And if you say that enough, you can kind of half trick the brain. Yeah. And so that's, that's why I say, that, you know, this is a great day and not a good day and all that kind of stuff. I just got to fool my own head. I was uh, I was being kind of a downer the other day, uh, kind of self-deprivating, you know, just being like, oh, that was stupid of me or whatever. I'm stupid, whatever. And Anna, I was tattooing Anna on the time and it was her birthday. So happy birthday, Anna. And uh, she was like, you got to quit doing that. And I was like, okay. So like I kind of took a time in my head to kind of like revamp. And it, it, it flipped me out of that because she was right. But it is just those little instances. Yeah. Catch yourself and be like, okay, change it up. How can we 
right. how we can go up from here. You know, in that regard, you know, I think I got a little bit of artist too. You, 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 you got most of it in the family, and you were awesome. I tell you, you were, you were always the first one drafted back in the mid to late '90s when Pictionary was oh, a thing. The oh. family Pictionary games. You were. We want Bart on our Unstoppable. team. Unstoppable. Yeah. I was correct. I was crushing, but not just because I was a good drawer. I always tell people I can also guess what you're drawing pretty good. Oh, that's true. You got to be a good guesser. You can't just be a good drawer in true. Pictionary. You got to yeah. be good at guessing. So no we would just dominate. Hey, on that topic, I'm going to get away from what I was going to talk about, but uh, you had talked once at your senior presentation at Franklin College about the art show and how you got into it and all that kind of thing, but tell, tell the story about how you made friends every time we, we moved. As an assistant football coach, we had to move a lot. You probably lived in 13 different homes and seven or eight different states Before and two different countries. 12. Yeah, and so you know you would get put in different schools and you know it might be february you might be a new kid in the school and you're sitting there how, how did you make friends yeah i mean all so my i credit my great grandmother for giving me a how to draw book when i was who knows right I, you know the dates your memory is crazy i don't understand that but february 3rd <laughs> no. 1994 no, no way you know <laughs> i know but i would just sit there and copy and since we did move around a lot you know it was like constantly getting you know, put into new situations, having to kind of adapt. And I would, especially when we moved to Japan, I would just draw. And that was my way of communicating with kids. You know, they instantly were like, oh, this, that's pretty good. This kid's cool. Did Let's They didn't say it that way, though, did they? No. They said, they said ah, what are you doing? But yeah, and, and even like, you know, going to Ohio, back to Indiana, moving in, high, in middle school, all that stuff, it was just kind of in like the friends that I later had in high school that I was Sharpie, you know, they saw my value and like, oh, this kid can draw Sharpie Pokemon on her yeah. back that, yeah. you know, eventually I think led me into tattooing. But um, yeah, it was just all non communicative drawing and. Right. Um, yeah, that's kind of how it was an interesting thing to look back on like a child, like, Go find friends everywhere right. you go. And right. it, it was a cool thing. It's definitely made me who I am today yeah. and how, you know, you kind of got to be personable and stuff, which is very cool. So we're, I don't... We're, we're proud of you for... And I, I half apologize for having to move you around that much, but that's sometimes part of life. I wouldn't... I don't think I'd be who I was. And some of those times, I'm glad you guys did move. Yeah. Because had we stayed in some spots, sure, life could have been... Sure, not to talk about those spots, but yeah, just... No, 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 I'm not going to sure. talk about those spots, but sure. some places are better than others. Right. So not Japan, Japan is great. This is one of my favorite quotes, and I had to put a picture with it, and I created this on the software program that I used in football all the time called Playmaker Pro. But this picture right here, you know, to blame is to be lame. And oftentimes in this world, everybody wants to blame the other person. And, uh, or the other other thing for uh, the problems that we're having. And sometimes you gotta look right back at yourself. There's three fingers pointing back at, at you and only one finger pointing away. That's a pretty good art job though, isn't it? You know, it's not bad, it's for, pretty good. For computer stuff. For using a computer in a program that they discontinued in right. 1994 probably. And this is stuff that all is in the, you know, and be quiet. This is all <laughs> the stuff that uh, you know are in the champion's manual, if you will. Here's another thing. I, I was fortunate enough to get asked by the Japanese players that I coached to go climb Mount Fuji one day, which is the largest Fuji-san. volcano in Japan. And uh, that was the hardest mental and physical day of my life. It was, it was so hard. But what I learned at the end was, uh, thank goodness we had some experts that helped us climb all the way to the top. You have to climb with an expert guide, keep your eyes on the prize. You know, I could see the top, but man, er I was in the best shape of my life too. I was probably 35 years old and I was running in Japan, you know, three, four miles was no problem at all. But toward the top of that mountain, you take three steps, at least I did, and I had to stop to catch my breath after three steps. Yeah. Well, the other thing was you take one step at a time. And then the last one was encouragement sure helps. Mm -hmm. uh, there was a guy named Mihata on our team who was a really good receiver, number six, if you recall, and Mihata was constantly encouraging me on that trip come on mike you can do it yeah. you know it's, and uh that really helped just him saying that yep helped tremendously it's good to it's good to get people around you that 
encourage what you're doing because if not then you're never gonna kind of reach the goals and set the stuff up like i mean with this podcast thing i don't know what the hell i'm doing i can but, tell yeah <laughs> i mean <laughs> look at this but one step at a time making <laughs> gradual changes and i do have encouragement from others uh and you know having an expert guide which you know i just look stuff up on youtube i've been asking friends that do stuff like that um and it, it's good i mean that's a that's a great life lesson right there just put into a really good doodle how about and that? some words in a, in a program right it's super cool and this is this has been my entire life has been these phrases and little drawings but i wouldn't i wouldn't change it for the world i think it's great but you know i, I wish i wish more in life we would have this opportunity just without a bit uh, without an audience it's watching not here. they're you not know? watching anything they're not watching but just just this kind of conversation is awesome in life around a fire you know, hey, let's get out a guitar and strum a little bit as we're talking. This is the whole reason why I wanted to do this. I because I it. do enjoy talking to people. And no, no, we do we chat. We have talks like this, but I, it's almost like a force, like no phone, no distraction, one hour conversation with me yeah. and whoever I want to talk to. That's it's fascinating. Like, yeah. And I mean, I get that all the time with my clients, but I'm kind of, you know, focused on tattooing and I have a ton of great conversations with my clients and... I just kind of wanted to show, I don't know, I feel like I have a little bit of a following on the internet, so I was like, you know what, I want to show other people, other people that I think are doing cool stuff, and just you with all your organizations that you're doing now, the impact that you've had on my life, the impact that you've had on everybody else's life, I'm like, i got to show this person, you don't really have a social media presence, you nah. could probably be a big time nah. guru in a stadium, but I know you don't want to do that, yeah. and I don't blame you because that would suck. <laughs> Yeah, there's but you so do many... public speaking and all that stuff. Oh, I, I, I think it's fun to share with people things that you've learned that have been good for you. Mm -hmm. And you know, it's just like anybody that that watches a uh, they go to a movie and they love it. They want to tell other people about yeah. it or a book they've read. You know, I, I here's a story. I remember walking in one summer day. Probably either 2010. I, I guarantee it was 2010. I had been at the office doing some football preparations for training camp. It's getting ready to start in another month. And uh, got home early, about three or so. And you and mom are sitting in the living room just watching a movie that's just started. And I, I, had, I walked in and, man, it looks kind of cool. I don't have a ton of things pressing on me. I, I'm going to lay that right down here on the floor and start watching it. The Book of Eli. Hmm. And... I was absolutely enthralled with the movie. I'm so glad I showed up when I did and watched it that that movie has probably had one of the greatest effects on me. Um, and I know it's Hollywood, but what he was able to memorize in the movie mm -hmm. made me think, hey, I, I want to start with memorizing some things that are positive that can help me so that if we ever live in a world where we don't have access to computer or phone or something that I've got stuff right here that I can go through to keep me going, keep me positive. Mm -hmm. You know, the other movie that, that it was awesome and is awesome is Apollo 13. And I grew up in the Apollo days uh, as a grade school kid when, when the teacher and all the teachers would get us in the gymnasium to watch the Apollo rockets take off or land. Everybody would be in the gym watching on a little, you know, the biggest TV that they had at the time, black and white TV that was probably as big as this fireplace, you know. Yeah. And uh, that was a cool thing. Well, Apollo 13, if you don't know, was the one that went up and around the moon but had an explosion in there with the oxygen tanks. And how are we going to get this vehicle back to Earth? And, and just, you know, it teaches you that you got to find a way. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's not always easy. No. But, you know, here's all the materials they have up there us engineers on the ground figure out what we got to tell them to get us home and, and it just made me think in the football world or whatever profession you're in sometimes things aren't easy there's problems that happen but we got to solve these problems you got to you got to solve the problems you have people that are willing to solve the problems with you like it's sometimes it takes a team effort to keep that mental structure kind of strong and keep it positive but were you so you watched the moon landing live when you were a kid July 20th, 1969, I, I was eight years old, and, and my mother, it was late at night, it was about 11 at night, and I had my best friend Dave McCauley over, and we were about ready to fall asleep. We were tired from the day at eight years old, but my mom 
had a wiffle ball or something, and she, she just was rolling it back and forth to us, trying to keep us awake because it was minutes away from them supposedly landing on the moon. <laughs> I like how you threw that in there. Yeah. I like that but little last part. We so did. make sure, just in case. <laughs> supposedly. We, Supp- we, we hope so, but who knows? After setting up all this computer stuff and getting the kind of signal that I can't even get these two things to communicate, a yeah. live moon landing. Yeah. Yeah. Seems crazy. We'll see. Fishy. Hey. I'm not telling anybody hey. what to think. I'm just saying think about it. I hope we don't end up on a watch list right now from There's all no this. There's no watch list. Know. Nobody's going to watch this. <laughs> <laughs> like, we're just doing this. But this is just fun for me. I said suppose it. Yeah, okay. that's what we're doing. We're, yeah. we're just asking no, questions. Critically, critically thinking. Quit, critically asking. Uh, so, you know, th- those, those kind of movies are good. You had brought up, uh, you know, this, this make it great thing. You know, what is great? What is what, it? That's what I asked you this morning. I was talking about, like, I want to... Well, I started thinking about it. I was like, why did I name it this? And I haven't really addressed that. And I think what I will do here in the future is ask people, like, what makes a great day to you? And then, in turn, it will, I think, identify itself with whatever that is. I got a couple of things I could talk about with this. You know, first of all, it. What is it? And I love acronyms. Absolutely love acronyms. And yes. one day I was listening to, you know, just some pop music in the in the car as we're riding from whatever radio station, and Genesis comes on. I like Genesis. Phil Collins, Phil was, Collins was great. And uh, the song comes on, Invisible Touch. And I thought, Invisible Touch. That's it. I T. That's it. Sometimes you can't describe what it is. It's invisible. And it's an invisible touch that we feel. And so, did you like that? I, I, I can did, tell. I, really did I can enjoy tell that. you I was did. Like, what the hell? <laughs> I was like, that's funny. Yeah. That's great. No, I do like that. That's yeah, cool. And some people have that invisible touch. They have it. You know, you hear a lot of coaches say, you know, I, I don't know what it is. He's not the greatest talent, but he has it. Mm-hmm. And that's why he's playing. And that's why he's he's becomes great. It's just that unforeseen. Tom Brady, sixth round, you know, final round draft choice. He looked awful at the combine. Watching the run of forty yard dash, see him with no shirt on. You're like, I don't know, but he has it. He does have it? That's pretty wild, huh? I liked that a lot. That was it. worth price of admission. I liked right that here. invisible touch a lot. It's the easiest acronym going. That's great. I do like it, but yeah, what 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 constitutes a great day for you? How do you sum that up? Because people ask, "Well, what's a great day?" Like, let's a- let's let's think in the athletic realm that if you look at every day from the time you get up to the time you go to bed as as game day, and and my colleague, my mentor, I think everybody needs mentors that are older than them, and they need some younger people that they can mentor. Share that, uh, share that, just keep the exactly keep the river flowing. Well, he has a podcast that he runs called Game Day Every Day. And to answer the question, I, I like looking at every day as a game. And there's going to be some, some momentum shifts, some ups and downs for sure. But what's been fun recently, and I did this just two nights ago, as I laid my head on the pillow, I, I tried to recount everything that I did that day. And seldom have I done that in life. But it was like, you know, as I was going to bed, I'm thinking, man, I don't know how much I got done today. And I started thinking about all the things I did, the places I went, the people that I talked to. I'm like, that was a great day. And if you can lay your head on the pillow and said, that was a winning day. We won to, I, I won with help. Uh, we won this day. If you, can ha- if you could string a whole bunch of those days together, man, it makes life so much more fun. Yeah. It's, it's not always a winning, you know, you don't win every day, but if you got... A string of great days turns into you know great weeks, great months, and eventually a great life. Let me tell a quick story, please. My sophomore year in college football game, I'm standing on the sidelines, not playing a whole lot that year, and uh, uh, things are not going our way in the game against a team that we should be playing real well against. And it's not. It's kind of like TCU against Georgia. Okay, uh, around halftime, one of the players next to me says, "Man, this just isn't our day." And the head coach, Coach Compizzi, a Mr. Positive guy, he says, hey, we got to make it our day. And I thought that, I thought that. And so as I became a head coach, 
2013. We're playing up at Bluffton, and things we're, we're supposed to be the favorite. We're supposed to win, but things are not going well. And I can remember thinking in my mind, man, this, this just isn't our day. Oh, I can't say that. We got to make it our day. We have to make it our day is the mindset. Mm -hmm. However, at the end of the day, as you put your head on the pillow that day, <laughs> after getting beat because everything went wrong, I could say, that just wasn't our day. Yeah. But you don't say that until the very end after the, the gotta, victory has been lost. You got to at least try. You have to try. But you know what? Even in that day, we lost a football game. I'm sure there was so many other positives that came from that. And oftentimes, you learn a lot more about yourself From in the losses. The losses. Mm -hmm. And just a, a man that had great influence on me within the last two years, Coach Mike Gottfried, uh, he's about 80 now, but I learned from him, he said, some days you win and some days you learn instead of lose, yep. okay? So we're never gonna, in my mind, we're never gonna lose. We're not losers. We're just winners that sometimes we learn more through the defeat. You just get a little bit of a challenge. The challenge is, yeah, to yeah. go better. Yeah, there's been plenty of times where, you know, I'm like, man, I freaking lost. That didn't work out. Yeah. And it's like, but I learned a lot from that loss and then, you know, kind of put that effort into winning whatever it is that you said. Um, yeah. That's good info. I think that, no, it's just you have so much... Um, Kind of those storytelling, date memorization, um, all those little, those little nuggets. That you've definitely passed on to me, and I'm trying to, you know, I'm trying to pass them on to other folks to listen. I mean, I know I've done a lot in my artistic career and outreach and tailgating that you were not a fan of. Uh, I didn't know what you're talking about. Well, I got this. I got this shirt from the from the basement. So that is sacrilegious. I, I, I'm, no, no, I, I wouldn't say it's to... sacrilegious. I wouldn't say it. it's just a. It's a mindset. People like to personify certain things, and like it remind. It's that little reminder that people say. You know, I, I remember I was talking to uh, Joe Rush the other day when he was about to, and maybe maybe I'll erase that name. Uh, somebody was on a fraternity porch, and they were about to whoop the shit out of this guy. Uh huh. And uh, I went up behind him and I grabbed him by the back and I said, uh, whatever his name is, what would my dad do? And he stopped and he turned around and grabbed me by the face. He goes, you're right. <laughs> and then he walked off and everything was chill. So I think it's just that kind of thing sure. um, that just clicks with people. And I, I made these t-shirts. Against my, my will. Face. Against their will. When I was a... I had to be a sophomore in college, and I made a killing off it, these shirts. The Jeff Street so, Lounge. Oh, it, it, you, I had them for sale. For, I can't believe I did it. Like, looking back now, you were like, don't do that. And I was like, I'm going to do it anyway. <laughs> uh, and it's some of people's favorite shirts, man. I get I get complimented on, complimented on them all the time. But yeah. then I did see somebody at your tailgate years later that remade it and I was like where did you get that and I'm like oh we made these shirts I was about to lose that he was like what do you want I was like empty your pockets like give me everything you have right now uh, no I didn't press any charges right. even though. but it's just those I think people you know can see they, they like those kind of messages that you put out so that's I was just trying to amplify it mm -hmm. and help it in a way that I knew how that was kind of uh, kind of funny I did spell reckless I think on the back I think I spelled <laughs> I reckless that. wrong yeah. Nope, these are the right. Go yeah. reckless, stay loose, enjoy football. That was the old motto from Franklin College from years before I was there by Coach Vaught. Yeah. And that's that's a life lesson, you know. Sometimes you've got to go a little reckless in 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 doing things that you may not think you can do, but I'm going to go for it anyway, whether it's yeah. playing the guitar or starting a Put, tattoo shop. Push the comfort zone out. Yeah, don't be on, afraid to fail. Live on your edge. If you're, you if you're sitting in comfortability all the time, it can be a little stagnant. You're not going to get anywhere. Um, yeah. What else? What else? You got? You got anything I, I, else? I mean, we could go on and on, but I, how much people aren't going to watch past? Oh, uh, people. Have what have we been talking for? 15 minutes. 50, what is it? 54 minutes. 54 minutes. So we got to wrap this thing up here shortly, huh? Okay. Yeah. If you got any other nugget, I mean, people aren't watching by now. No way. No. <laughs> I, I tell you, I think everybody. Hey, what are what's your hobbies? Because I think, hobbies? I think besides that passion and what you're good at and you to help it. others, you have to have some other things to keep you balanced. Yeah. Uh, mine is guitar and and golf. 
and fly fishing, those three. I, I think I can handle three. I don't want to get to do too many. Well, I think we are people that like to try new things and like distractions of stuff. So we, it's easy for us to get, ooh, I like this, I like this, yes. I like this, I like this. Because um, I could get into a ton of things. Um, but I'm trying to, like you said, dwindle it down to a couple things. Um, but you're young. And, and, I'm, and I think of my father. You know, you're just a lot like my father in that, and you, you had a great relationship with him, but... Man, he, he, he wanted to get a boat. He wanted to get a canoe. And, and, and all that stuff was good for him. Uh, he was into photography for a while, but he would try things and then eh, get away from it. But I think you've got to do that when you're young. You have to try some things that are going to stick. Yeah. And I, I mean, for me, I mean, I just got this RV, so I'm like learning the in and outs of that. I'd like to, you know, be able to, you know, camp remotely and do stuff. And, and that's been a, a big time thing. Um, I mean, I've been drawing, and like this, I, is this not a hobby, what I'm doing hey, right now? this is. I'm learning, uh, I learned some editing the other day, some making like some animated stuff. It's been fun. And, and you look like you're in phenomenal physical shape. Is there something else that you're, do you, do you uh, rock I mean, climb? Do I you... do, I do some fitness activities. That's I've been good. swimming and well, rock climbing. And, and I think that that's important. This might be the last visual that I show now that I think about it. I remember printing this off here somewhere that I think that, you know, I'm going to show you this first, Bart, but, you know, we, we are, if this is us, there are four components of us, you know. There is the, the physical, the mental, the social, and the spiritual, and that's called the separate bases paradigm. It looks like, it looks like baseball bases, if you were, softball, I should say, softball yes. bases. However, the touching bases paradigm is what it's all about. When all those come together, that's when the fire in the middle ignite. And so you can't, you can't discount any one of those four. You, if you don't take care of your body, if you don't take care of your mind, you don't take care of your spirit, yep. you don't take care of others, you're not going to be able to have that fire that, that burns within. You have to find that kind of equilibrium between all of the... Yeah, it's hugely important because you could be the most fit person in the world, but if you're not mentally... Which I think actually... Like, Eh, maybe that's not a good analogy, but it does take all those things. I think it does. I do believe. Yeah, son, Father. extremely proud of you and inspired by what you're doing. And right. it's always fun to walk in your shop and feel that energy. Anytime I'm driving on the east side, I, 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 I want to stop in and just say hello. And we appreciate uh, you popping in. You, you've got a great. You got a lot of chargers in there that are friendly people, and uh, just you know. The whole family is extremely proud of you, so keep I'm, up the great work. I'm uh, honored and very fortunate. I, every day I say how thankful I am because I know that you know, a lot of people listening or a lot of people that I know do not have a father figure like yourself. And you know, just you, mom, sister, just the whole family, I'm extremely lucky and fortunate. And I know that's not all the, always the case, so I try to help any way I can yeah. because I, I was fortunate like what am I just going to sit idly by and just rack in the, the just blessings and stuff that I've gotten I want to share it with people and share this this knowledge that I've been given as a ch child and young adult so um, that's all I'm doing I'm proud of you guys you guys have led the way I'm just kind of you know trying to make you proud so it's cool keep on rocking it okay keep on rocking thanks yeah. Mike Leonard handshake to end it Man, thank you so much, everybody. Uh, check this out. Check out the past episodes. Um, I'm, I'm excited to have a lot of different people on here. If you know somebody that wants to sit down and chat by a fire, hit me up. Uh, I'm on Instagram, at Bart period Leonard. And you have any social media of any kind? TeamworkGuitar.com. TeamworkGuitar.com. ePro Plus, if you know any, uh, some, you know, young gentlemen that don't have any father figures in their life that might benefit from something like that, which I think all will. So um, I just want to say thank you and have a great day, but make it one first.